Welcome to News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss. Here now the news for December 11th, 2020. Orlando International Airport will soon offer COVID-19 testing on site as part of increased measures to ensure traveler safety during the ongoing pandemic. The pilot program is part of a collaboration with, the, with Advent Health, the same provider that carries out temperature checks across Walt Disney World. The COVID-19 testing clinic will be located pre-security in the airport's third level at the west end of the main terminal, providing a convenient testing opportunity for both travelers and airport employees. The clinic is slated to open later in December, with operations scheduled to run through July 2021. While extensive COVID-19 health and safety regulations are in place in the Central Florida theme parks, uh, for many guests, especially those out of state, a trip might not be feasible until vaccines are widely available and those at risk can immun uh, immunize themselves against the virus. According to Fox 35 Orlando, Advent Health, of course, again, the health provider and official partner of Walt Disney World, held a briefing where it was announced that COVID-19 vaccinations could be distributed as early as, mon as early as Monday or Tuesday of next week with FDA approval, which would grant emergency use authorization for the vaccine. Advent Health is one of the first hospitals in Florida to receive the vaccines, which must be stored at negative 70 degrees Celsius. Vaccine distribution would take place as soon as they arrive at their facilities. No major safety issues or drastic side effects were reported with the vaccine as of yet. We're coming close to the end of an era at Epcot. The ongoing demolition of Interventions West seems to be moving fast, uh, meaning the structure which has stood since the park opened in 1982 will soon be coming down. The roof panels have been completely stripped off uh, this section you're looking at now, leaving the building's bare bones exposed. A light structure is in place to help illuminate Spaceship Earth at night since the lights on top of Interventions uh, will be long gone. We happen to take these photos as the sun was setting, serving as a metaphor for the state of the once proud pavilion. A small section of panels remain on the right-hand side, though at the pace they seem to be working at, those could be gone any day now. Over on the side closer to Imagination and the Land, the remnants of the roof have been removed, exposing the framework. Only the panels on the walls remain for now. It is uh, jarring to see that breezeway completely stripped. It's, uh, it's, it's sad. With Disney slated to take over the Morocco Pavilion's uh, shopping and dining after a tumultuous restart post-pandemic, most restaurants and merchandise locations within the pavilion that are previously open are now closed. Here's a listing of each affected location, plus their reopening dates. The Souk Al Maghreb merchandise is now closed, expected to reopen on Saturday. Spice Road Table is closed, expected to reopen on Sunday with a new menu. Restaurant Marrakesh and the Medina merchandise location will remain closed until further notice. When Spice Road Table reopens, the location will have an updated menu, but will still include hummus fries, but there will also be a, a wide selection of beverages. We don't know exactly what's on there yet. As a reminder, reservations for Spice Road Table are no longer available. Additionally, the Morocco Kidcot Fun Stop will relocate to the east side of the pavilion. The Pavilion Sapphire Holiday Kitchen for the taste of the festival of the holidays will remain open. When we stopped by, painting was going on at the Spice Road table. Columns are getting new detail work painted to look like intricate tiles. And many areas of the pavilion are temporarily blocked off by planters. The Art of Henna is closed. The Race Against the Sun exhibit and the nearby Kidcot table remain open. And as part of Olaf's holiday tradition expedition scavenger hunt, Olaf has been moved from his original location. We've been keeping a close eye on the new entrance fountain in front of Spaceship Earth at Epcot for several months now. And while construction continues throughout the park, the fountain is one of the last pieces of Epcot's refurbished entrance uh, re remains to be finished. The fountain, which has three lucite pylons in the center, was running when we passed by, meaning it's probably close to done. The construction walls surrounding the fountain seem to have moved slightly as well. And while we looked at the walls, we realized we could hear running water from the fountain. And spotted between a uh, sliver of those progress walls, we saw water running along the fountain, which you're looking at now. Uh, supposedly, the fountain is supposed to debut before the end of the year, so it's any day now uh, before these walls come down and the fountain is uh, officially part of the park. Overnight, the first of five enormous floating platforms for Epcot's new nighttime show, Harmonious, was moved in, into position on World Showcase Lagoon to begin testing of its onboard show equipment. Photos came our way via Imagineer Zach Ridley originally on Instagram. The bridge between China and African outpost was raised to bring in the barge. Spaceship Earth and the Epcot Christmas tree shone brightly behind the new show platform. The platforms will apparently be a constant sight around the lagoon, as was announced a few weeks ago, that they'll be staged during the day for added kinetic energy with fountains, also because it costs less money to not have to move them. 
The barge and uh, slash platform now sits in World Showcase Lagoon, the first of five that will eventually bring to life the central body of water. Harmonious first was set to debut this year, but has been delayed. It's now expected to be part of the offerings for Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary in 2021. Um, needless to say, most reactions on social media have been negative to this. This thing's going to sit there all the time, and it really blocks views of the pavilions from across the lagoon. Yeah, it'll have a water feature, but that's just really to mask that there's this big thing sitting in the middle of the lagoon. But I, I, not having those sunset views across the lagoon with all the pavilions will be terrible. Uh, even if there is a fountain in the middle, it's not a replacement for how pretty the view was across the lagoon to American Adventure in Italy and China and Japan. Um, it's it's definitely a downgrade. Um, I I appreciate at least that they're going to try to mask it with fountains, but it's it's not good. It's just they're too big. The Waffles booth has reopened at the Taste of the Epcot International Festival of Holidays with new menu items. You can head on over to our site for a review of the new gingerbread waffle and the turkey uh, the turkey and waffle dish. Uh, you get the gingerbread waffle for four twenty five. It's served with whipped cream and citrus cranberry sauce. You get the turkey and waffle for six fifty. And it's a stuffing waffle with turkey, gravy, and cranberry. Waffles is located in Future World, it's a weird name, Future World West along the pathway between the Imagination Pavilion and World Showcase. Bay Lake Tower at Disney's Contemporary Resort sits so close to the Magic Kingdom that the walk to the theme park won't leave you winded. The villas opened on August 4th, 2009 as an addition to Disney Vacation Club. Recently, we stayed in a two-bedroom villa with a view of Bay Lake. Features two bedrooms, three bathrooms, and sleeps up to nine adults. You can head on over to our website for the full tour with photos. The, the video tour is right here on our YouTube channel. During their condominium association meeting, Disney Vacation Club revealed their updated schedule for refurbishing and refreshing various resort villas in the next two years, DVC News reported. In 2021, three resorts will have small soft good refreshes, which involves updating wall coverings, floor, uh, floor coverings, linens, and decor. These will be happening at Alani. Uh, the villas at Disney's Grand Ca uh, Floridian Resort and Spa, Disney's Polynesian Villas and Bungalows, and Disney's Beach Club Villas. Of course, Disney's Polynesian Village Resort is also receiving a larger scale refurbishment of its regular rooms. In 2022, Boulder Ridge Villas at Wilderness Lodge and Disney's Hilton Head Island Resort will both receive full refurbishments. That means completely new rooms. Meanwhile, Disney Saratoga Springs Resort and Spa is currently receiving that full refurbishment that is set to be completed now in the summer of 2021. According to Disneyland Resort's calendar, Downtown Disney District and Buena Vista Street will not be open on Christmas Day. The calendar lists no hours for December 25th, 2020. Hours for the surrounding days are normal. Dining locations at both Downtown Disney District and the recently reopened Buena Vista Street had to close earlier this week due to the new stay-at-home order. The theme parks have been closed since March with no reopening date in sight. Uh, this holiday closure will mark the first time in its 65-year history that Disneyland is not operating in some way, shape, or form on Christmas Day. Thanks to the Disney Magical Kingdom blog, we have a look at the construction of Arendelle, the world of Frozen at Hong Kong Disneyland. Head on over to our site to view uh, aerial photos of the project. Arendelle, the world of Frozen is just one of the many big projects that have been in the works for the expansion of Hong Kong Disneyland. It's meant to debut next year, however the project may be delayed due to COVID-19. Again, for the latest update, head on over to WDWNT.com. If you're looking for a piece of the Florida sunshine to get you through the cold gray winter, there's a new item at Walt Disney World that'll brighten up your day. Well, maybe. A new Brito figure of the orange bird is available, rendered in Brito's colorful patchwork style. For example, the bird's head has his standard plain orange and yellow scheme over his left eye and most of his mouth, but over his right eye, uh, his head has been marked with black squiggles and yellow polka dots to round things out. This is horrendous, by the way. Each appendage is also a different color. These are This is very bad. But uh, if you do want it, we found it for $60 at Boutique at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. For more information on these stories and more, head on over to WDWNT.com. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, the Vacationeer, the engineers of your next magical vacation. Sit back and let their team of vacation planning experts craft your family's next magical trip. The best part, their services are free. Visit WDWNT.travel for details. The Vacationeer, the official travel agency of WDWNT. Uh, don't forget the Splash Miss shirt uh, is available still from Carousel Products. And if you use the code Splash Miss, you can save 10% on all orders of $50 or more. That's code Splash Miss to save on not only that Merry Splash Miss ugly sweater shirt, but all of our great items at CarouselProducts.com. 
If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Also make sure to hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of the show. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Carilla saying enjoy the rest of your today and have a great big beautiful tomorrow. And the next show, I think we're just gonna we're gonna park a big barge. It's right in front of me. You're not gonna see me, but I'll still read the news. You'll hear me. Dreamfinders is WDW News Today's podcast all about the creative culture surrounding Disney parks. Authors, Imagineers, dancers, actors, photographers, filmmakers, and a whole lot more have all stopped by to chat about how Disney has inspired their artistic work. But I still remember sitting in uh, conference tables and looking across at Michael and Jeffrey Katzenberg and this sort of little six-year-old inside of me going, what in heaven's name is going on here? <laughs> this is... And uh, we're off and running and Tony needs someone to lay it out for him. And there's no architect available. So the next thing I know, I'm laying out the pavilion. I, I got to tell you, I have not enjoyed a podcast so much. It's just a, just a warm conversation and a warm and intelligent conversation, which you don't find that often in podcasts. Dreamfinders. Episodes drop every other Tuesday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcatcher.